Wesleyan Church. Join us as we praise our Lord and Savior. Last line. Wow, we're just getting a, a quick step here this morning. Uh, really, really uh, falling in, in uh, the uh, <laughs> falling into the Christmas spirit here. There we go. That's that's the one I was going for. <laughs> so, well, good morning. Welcome to a live Wesley in church. We we have a lot of fun here. So uh, glad you're here this morning. If you're a visitor, uh, <laughs> we just encourage you to fill out a, a visitor card. We have these at the entrances and. We just love to get connected with you and uh, get to know one another. And so I encourage you to be filling that out this morning if you're visiting with us either here or online. Uh, today, happening here, uh, right after second service this morning, you notice the Christmas tree is here. Uh, we're going to be decorating the Christmas tree right after service and uh, right after second service, sorry. And so we encourage you to be a part of that time in which we can come together as a church family and decorate and enjoy the Christmas season. Tonight at 5.30 we have youth group and I uh, encourage the team to come on out to that. Tomorrow night, Monday night at 7 p.m. we have choir practice and we encourage you to be a part of choir. Tuesday at 10 a.m. we have women inspired by God. On Tuesday at 7 p.m. we have our ministry board meeting. If you are a part of the ministry board, please make sure to be a part of that. And on Wednesday at 6.30 we have our prayer and Bible study meeting uh, led by Pastor Larry going through the Advent uh, devotional that we've started. Uh, coming up here <clears throat> in the next couple months here, we have this opportunity for you as a member or uh, someone who's interested in a live Wesleyan church for a discovery club that is a midweek children's program that's going to be starting on January 11th. And 
with this, we, we are seeking out individuals who can help with Discovery Club. And so if you are interested in helping in maybe different areas such as crafts or games or just being leaders who would help in, in the different areas uh, with leading the children, I would ask you to see Pastor Cam this morning. He's going to be coming around with a clipboard. And so uh, he's going to be looking at you and say, hey, how can you help this morning? And so I would love to have you be a part of that. As well as we have our registration forms for Discovery Club uh, at the bulletin board downstairs as well as online. And so uh, just encourage you to be a part of that. you notice as well in your, your uh, bulletin this morning we have an insert, and we had this in last week. I just brought it in one more time. Uh, this is for inviting a neighbor for Advent uh, to tell them about what we have going on here, the different opportunities for them to join us this Advent season. And so encourage you, would you take that to a neighbor? And then I'm going to have Sean is going to share a special announcement concerning some of those. Good morning. So next Sunday at 2.45, we're going to be meeting here at the church to go Christmas caroling. So next week, we're going to be doing some Christmas caroling. We're going to be meeting here at 2.45, leaving the church probably around 3 o'clock. Not exactly sure where we're going yet, but uh, <laughs> some of it might be weather dependent. So we do have an opportunity to go to uh, assisted living place, or we could just be walking around the neighborhoods. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that more next Sunday morning. Uh, but then the week at the Saturday after that, on the 17th, is our annual Christmas party. That's going to start at 4 o'clock. The, uh, I don't know how you say, dress, uh, the dress of the Christmas party will be uh, ugly sweaters or Christmas pajamas. So bring <laughs> a snack to share. We've got some uh, games that we've got planned. We're probably going to have a little bit of a hymn sing to start it. So it's going to be great fun for everybody, and we hope that you can all make it. That starts at 4 o'clock on the 17th. Thank you, Sean. Well, this morning as we get into uh, a time of worship, we're going to have uh, Mary Sinesi is going to come and light the Advent candle. The candle this morning uh, that we are lighting, we last week lit the candle of hope. This Sunday is the candle of faith or preparation. And we're going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5, which says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness prepares the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough grand sh uh, ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Would you stand this morning as we enter a time of worship? Father, we thank you for the expectant hope that we have during this Advent season. Lord, as we have lit this candle to remind ourselves of the faith that we can have in you as you prepare that faith in us, Lord, this morning would you bless our time of worship? Lord, would you be honored in our worship? Would we worship you in song, and in truth. And Lord, would you bless our time. Lord, thank you that you are the glorious one that we can praise during this Christmas season. You are the one who gives us the faith to be able to trust you with everything. Lord, we ask that you bless this time now, in Jesus' name. Amen. The children can be dismissed for Sunday school.
that came upon the midnight clear. This is one of our more contemporary songs, Christmas <coughs> Offering. And Father, we bring the offering of worship to you this morning. We just bow before you and praise you. Seeking. 
morning if there's any prayers or praises that you would like to give God during this Advent season uh, we'd love for you to share them with us the congregation yes Stacy you're ready to go Yes, we are. Yes, Helen. Or sorry, Sue. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, yeah. Praise the Lord. Any prayers or praises this morning? Yes.
seeing the people there. Where are you? Yeah, seashore. sharing in prayer. Yes, John? Unspoken or any unspoken so far? A lot of unspoken so far. Yes, Gail? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and know that he hears us and he answers us. Father, we come before you this morning and Lord, we come before your feet and your throne. And we recognize during this Advent season that we can come before you with all the requests that we have, all the praises we have, and we can lay them at your feet and recognize you are Lord. You are the one that we can trust with everything. And so, Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that we've heard of this morning. We thank you for the blessings of the ministries through the ladies' brunch yesterday and the wonderful times that our church has been strengthened by the relationships of friendships in this church. and Lord, we pray this morning, would you continually bless those relationships, bless those ministries. And Lord, as well, we thank you for 
Terry's baptism, Lord. Lord, this opportunity for Terry to profess his faith and to declare it again and again to you. As he faces the last days, Lord, we thank you that you've worked through a neighboring church and to baptize him, for him to receive that and to receive that inward work of what you're doing on the inside is being revealed on the outside. Lord, I praise you for that. And Lord, we, we praise you as well for Anne and her voice coming back and the successful surgery and uh, the praises that she's given for seeing new people here and, and the blessing of, of having new faces at Christmas time and the blessing of being strengthened by coming together, by centering ourselves around you and your word. Lord, we also thank you for how you bless the Schwartz family with their travel. Thank you for the good time they could spend with family. Lord, we thank you for bringing them back safely and that they are here with us today. And Lord, we do lift up Dan Orshaw and the struggle that he is facing as he reaches the end of his days in this valley of the shadow of death and Lord being put on hospice and Lord we do pray for his comfort we pray that you would comfort him today would you bless him and know that you are present there with him Lord would you bless his end times because it is not the end for him it is the beginning of eternity with you. But Lord, would you comfort him? Would you comfort the family as they go through this tumultuous time and the time of grieving over what is lost? The Lord, would you be their peace? Would you be their portion this morning? And Lord, we lift up others with health concerns. We lift up Linda and the brain cancer that she's facing and the goals that she has. Lord, would you help minister to her during this time? Lord, would you work in her body to heal her, to be able to do the things that she desires to do? But Lord, would your will be done in all things? Or would your peace reign? Would your power reign in Linda's life? And Lord, we also lift up Sharon in her health. And Lord, we ask you to continually intervene in her life. Lord, would you be present with her? Lord, would your peace be present and would your healing power be present in her body? Lord, as she continually faces the challenges that come from cancer, Lord, would you bless her body? Would she be renewed with strength, with life, so that she can continue to praise you, to give you glory, honor. And Lord, we do lift up the unspoken requests this morning, Lord, the many requests that we have weighing on our heart and our mind, Lord, that only you can intervene. And Lord, we need your power today in these unspoken requests. Lord, we need you to work in our hearts and our minds and our loved ones around us in their hearts and their minds. Lord, would you work to resolve the unspoken requests that we have today? Would you speak new life? Would you speak your peace? Would you speak your truth? And Lord, we thank you for Penelope's renewed relationship with Larry's stepdaughter, or her stepdaughter, Larry's daughter, and how this distance has turned to closeness lately. And Lord, we continually pray that you would bless that relationship. Would you continually bless their closeness? Would you draw them together and knit them together as a family and strengthen them? And Lord, I do lift up Eva's request as well to love 
like Jesus. Lord, would you always enable us to love like you do? Would your love pour out of us? Would it be evident in everything that we do? And Lord, this morning as we come into a time of studying your word and, and asking, Lord, what does it mean to worship? Lord, it is to love you. It's to worship you with all of our heart and our strength and our mind. Lord, would you be blessed this morning as we ask, what are the ways we can worship you? How can worship work wonders in our life today as your people? as a people who are consecrated to you, who set ourselves apart for your glory, to proclaim your name above every other name. So Lord, would you bless this time that you worked in our hearts. Would you receive all the glory and the honor this morning? We ask this in Jesus' name. Well, this morning we're continuing our Because of Bethlehem series in the time we have here this morning. We're continuing on, and this morning we're examining this song of Mary and looking at this concept of how worship really works wonders in our life. We know that worship is a key part of our daily Christian walk, but during Christmas time it takes on a new wondrous reminder. On the night that Jesus was born, he didn't receive, you know, the best things that we would think of. A new present, you know, a new car, (laughs) new clothes, stocking full of candy. Though he deserved much greater things than these, the scripture speaks of the gift he received. And it was this gift of worship. The angels, they, they offer up songs Shepherds, they gather to find him. And wise men, they gave up riches. They all bowed down before him. All, they all knew the true gift they could give Jesus was the gift of worship. And we're going to be looking at Mary's song here and seeing the way that she worships God. Worships the way God has moved in her life. So we're looking at Luke chapter 1, um, verses 46. And we're going to go all the way to 55 here. Because... We want to see how God works through Mary's worship. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has set the, sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised our ancestors. Let's pray. Father, would your word come alive in our hearts this morning? Would we see you move in a new way? Lord, as we consider this worship aspect of our life, of how we worship you in this Christmas season, Lord, would you, again, receive all the glory and honor? Would you be blessed? Would we worship you? The way Mary, the shepherds, the wise men, the everyone, the angels worshipped you. But we have that heart this Christmas season. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Christmas is always an interesting time uh, in our lives, and it was an interesting time when I was younger. My like, sir, one of the things I remember. The most about Christmas as a kid was one year for Christmas. We, we celebrated 
it as Jesus' literal birthday. I don't know if you've ever done this before, uh, but instead of starting the morning with opening as many presents as we could, we did something a little different. Uh, my parents, the night before, they had gotten a cake mix, and they had actually baked a birthday cake for Jesus. And this was an interesting moment because then we took the cake and we all went outside and we went in the driveway and in the cold and that morning we, we sang happy birthday to Jesus. And that was, that was something so different. It was one of the weirdest moments in my life because I was like six or seven. I remember thinking to myself, uh, remember when I was singing happy birthday into the air, like I know Jesus isn't having a piece of this cake this morning. Uh, but at the same time, Something that always stuck with me because of this was before we opened the gifts, before that normal time of the rituals of Christmas, the things we did, it was this way that we started our morning off with worshiping Jesus. That day, my parents, they had the right idea. They, they taught my brother and I this, this concept before all the other Christmas traditions. Let's start with worshiping Jesus, recognizing the importance of this day for his glory before rushing into the holiday craziness and saying you know look what I got we stopped we recognized it was all about Jesus we started our morning by worshiping Jesus's birth in a song that declared our joy about his birth in this moment with Mary here we see this young girl caught in this awkward time in which she's carrying the Son of God, but declares in the, the magnificence of God in this moment. Just before this song that Mary sings, she has this encounter with her relative Elizabeth. And with Elizabeth, uh, her relative, Mary meets her and sees her, and Mary, or sorry, Elizabeth is also carrying this miracle child. And it knows uh, this miracle child is John the Baptist, which we learn about in scriptures as the one who prepares the way that we read about this morning, the, the preparing the way. And the moment Mary walks into the same room as Elizabeth, John in, the Baptist in the womb leaps for joy by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and the Spirit helps him and Elizabeth to recognize Jesus is in Mary's womb. In this amazing yet awkward moment in which the mystery of Mary carrying the Son of God is revealed and affirmed. This amazing moment. And immediately after we hear this song that Mary begins to sing, to declare how amazing is God, how amazing is He. This chor uh, chorus often is referred to by co uh, commentators as the Magnificat. Is a, it's a halt in the story of Jesus' birth to sing a praise, to sing about God's goodness. In the first half of these verses, Mary tells about how God has been good to her. How, specifically, she proclaims the blessing she has received from God. How she is his servant, yet she is the object of his favor and his mercy. Not only that, but how Mary is kind of in this lowly uh, place in, in social class, yet God shows how forever his mercy will reign, this perpetuity of his mercy. She proclaims how it lasts from forever, from generation to generation. Mary experienced this blessing. Is this proclamation of past, present, and future blessings that she has received from but then the song changes, and it changes about who it is talking about being blessed. And the second half here is this proclamation about Israel, how Israel has been blessed, how Israel has been God's servant and the object of his favor and mercy. And she also discusses how Israel has been taken from lowly places by having its rulers stripped away. And in this moment here, his mercy towards Israel is increasing and it's going to last forever just as he promised it always would. This beautiful worship here, the song of Mary, this moment here reminds us of how God deserves our full worship. How it goes beyond just us and goes throughout the whole world. 
this word worship that we often confuse or just think it's just singing songs together on Sunday mornings has a much more profound effect on our lives. Worship is not something that we do, but rather something that God does through us. We're not the originators of worship. The presence of God initiates worship. When God enters the room, people worship him. This is what happens here in Mary's life. God has acted in her life, and now she worships him. Not only do we worship God, though, we do it in different ways that engage ourselves, engage our being physically, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually. But let's go a little further into the Gospel of Luke in these moments surrounding Jesus' birth this morning to see more examples of this. We're going to look at Luke chapter 2, verses 13 through 14. And this is the account of the angels at Jesus' birth. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The angels, they spoke praises about God and they proclaimed his goodness to the shepherds. They proclaimed this to the shepherds standing by. They didn't silently go around pointing to the star and hoping others would see Jesus. No, they worshipped Jesus with their words. They spoke intelligibly. They used words such as holy and glorious to describe them. They were proclaiming a transformative message, clearly that the shepherds could act upon. When we consider the culture of, of worship through song today, there are quite a variety of ways we could describe worship and song whether it's traditional or contemporary choruses. I wouldn't say either were like Mary's songs or the angels' songs or praises, but I would highlight there's three forms that in the, in the contemporary world that we continue to pursue as we seek to grow in our worship services to reach people in our community. The first form of worship we should seek is an educational worship, one that tells the story of God. When we consider how we worship God, it should educate people about who God is, his character, his heart, his promises, his words. Worship is a form of, of educating people. And when it loses that, then we lose a form of discipleship, a form of which, a way that we can teach others. Many of the traditional hymns of the faith are ones that educate the congregation about what God has said in his word, who he is. The second form we see nowadays is what I would call an inspirational worship. There are often modern choruses that inspire the believer that day to day, going forth in the strength of God's promises to live into the mission God has for them. The words of many choruses can come to mind when we think about this, these inspirational worship songs. The goodness of God that we sung at Thanksgiving is inspirational because we are being encouraged to consider, amongst other things, about God's goodness, sharing it with others, allowing it to encourage us and lift others up. A third form we see nowadays in, in our worship is this caregiving worship, this healing worship. These are more songs and prayers that are for the body of Christ. They're not for teaching or inspiring. They are caring for them. Rather than proclaiming who God is or being inspired to go, we are asking God to intervene or to comfort us, to be by our side. I think of choruses like, Lord, I need you. Lord, would you come? Or the hymn, It is Well with My Soul. These songs that care for the congregation and often are places to near a pastoral prayer time, a time in which we worship God, but we are being comforted by his presence. Today we should worship God, especially in this time of Advent. But it starts, first of all, by worshiping him verbally. And that's our first point this morning, is that we should worship him with our words. Worship him verbally, using our tongue. We need to speak or sing about God. You see, 
just like Mary and the angels, the words should be intelligible that we are using. Yeah, I, I, I try not to be uh, critical of any songs or anything, but there's always been one song that uh, I, I, I struggle with. Uh, I love the song. I love the music. I, I, I love a lot of the words of it, uh, but it's, it's Good, Good Father. Uh, it's, it's just one song that when I hear it sung, I think uh, it's, it's one that I, I just, I look at the lyrics and I think good, good is just not grammatically correct. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those words that uh, it, it's, it's something that I, I, I look at and I say, God, I, I, I know you are great and I, I know it's just the way we sing this song, but I want to offer him the highest praises that I can sing with my lips. These words that honor him. You know, we should be speaking of his goodness and holiness in every area of our life. He is a good, good father. But the truth is, he is a magnificent father. You know, Matthew twelve thirty four says that <clears throat> uh, the tongue speaks from the overflow of the heart. If we speak from the overflow of the heart. If we are filled with his heart, we speak from that. My worshiping words don't slow down my praise, but if we checked our tongue, would it be evident this Advent season that we are worshiping him verbally, speaking it out loud? Would it show that we are worshiping created things, things like money, people, or objects? Maybe our own self-interest, our job, our house, you name it. We should be examining our words this week to find what do we worship? Who do we worship? Secondly, this morning, we can see in Luke 2, we're going to read a little bit further, verses 15 through 20. But we can see that the shepherds and Mary left an example of worshiping him and community. Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. It says, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. You know, the shepherds, they didn't hoard the news of Jesus just to themselves. Instead, they shared it with those around them. They told others where to find Jesus. They told them the hope that had entered the world. These lowly shepherds became royal messengers who worshipped God, worshipped Jesus by sharing his glory with those around them who had never tasted it before. We must worship Jesus in community too. This morning we already participated in that when we sang praises, when we read scripture together, when we prayed together. Church, it's, it's easy to worship in the Sunday morning community, but the shepherds sh showed us something about our worship of God away from the stable. It's not closed off from coworkers, teammates, friends, and neighbors, or even family. Worshiping him and community goes beyond the church walls to say there is hope in a manger. There is life that we can have. I've seen that hope. I want to show you that hope, to experience that. That is worshiping him in community as we speak and live with one another outside the church walls. We need to ask ourselves, how will we worship God in our community this Advent season? Maybe it starts by going caroling or just telling a friend about your hope at Christmas time. It's Jesus. He's the hope. Thirdly, this morning, is we need to worship him. This word is, is a hard one to write probably, but it's demonstrably. Demonstrably in that this aspect of worship that we tend to avoid as, as uh, maybe more reserved people, but there's something that is instilled in us that uh, we need to demonstrate 
our worship. You know, I, often uh, times in, in church we we think it's it's just about standing up straight when we sing. We don't dare move or or, or do anything else, whether. It's just the tradition we grew up in or the social anxiety. We feel maybe worshiping together. But there's something about worshiping God in a demonstrative way, in a way that's not for other people but is for God. There's something about worshiping him. It's expressing openly to him, to not reserve ourselves around him but to give him the praise. And it's not just about singing. It's about, you know, talking about him at home and in our communities. And this isn't about talking about causing a scene everywhere we go, but rather not missing the opportunity to engage with God openly in worship. You know, the psalmist raised hands. The magi, they bowed down. And David even stripped his clothes while dancing in the streets with his, not encouraging that this morning, but when we think about the ways that we honor God, we're called to worship him openly, worshiping him. The way you demonstrate your praise to God reflects your heart. So when there's a chorus or a hymn that you resonate with, raise a hand to heaven to say, God, this is true. God, I believe this. Maybe sing an amen because you're responding from the soul to declare who God is in your life. Perhaps ask yourself, how am I demonstrating worship to Jesus this Christmas season? How am I proclaiming it in my words, in my actions. If you're going through the motions, ask God to touch your heart, to renew a right spirit within you. The one warning I I give with this, though, is not to get caught up in the emotionalism when you worship, when we worship the feeling rather than worshiping God. There's a difference there. Worshiping the feeling is an incorrect form of worship that abandons God for what some would may call the worship experience. This is not worshiping God, it's worshiping feelings and physical memories. True demonstrative worship is one that lets go of preconceived notions of worship. To recognize that we raise a hand as we hear the still small voice of God. To surrender. It's to get on our knees and to weep before Him when we've run from Him for so long. It's to proclaim Him. It's not centered on the emotion, it's just raw, unbridled passion passion for him, for God's glory, to transform our lives. Lastly this morning, one aspect of worship we don't often talk about is to worship him with sacrifice. The most difficult of all the different aspects of worship is the aspect of of sacrifice. To worship him with sacrifice is to worship him with a right heart. As Paul says in Romans 12, we are to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. This is our true and proper worship, he says. What the shepherds, the magi, and even Mary and Joseph all had in common is their worship required that they give themselves over to God. They gave something of themselves. Mary, I believe, gave up uh, the most of all of them there. She sacrificed her reputation, her dreams, and even her body for the sake of God's glory. She was a woman of faith. She's a woman of faith that worshipped God in this amazing way that none of us could probably fully comprehend. But this is one of the greatest examples of being a living sacrifice for the Lord. How much are we truly willing to sacrifice to God this Advent season? to give him our true and proper worship. You know, I, I ponder this question a, a lot, and I feel some days, how much more can I sacrifice, God? How much more can I worship you? You know, I've, I've given up my dreams to pursue ministering in a church, dreams of becoming an engineer. You know, I've given up my daily life to minister to people. I've given up holding security of a home at times and a job the answer I always find when I ask the Lord, what else can I give? He always reminds me in a still small voice, I can always give more. I can always give more. Nothing in the world is mine to hold on to. Nothing in this world is something I can hold back from God. It's all His. What am I truly sacrificing if it's already His? 
just letting go of that which would hold me back from worshiping him more. Whatever it is, maybe it's a house, a car, family, friends, a job, everything else we can lose today for God's glory. If it's for his glory, I would say I would gladly give it to him for our ways are not his ways. His plans are greater than we will ever know. And the more we surrender to him and worship, the more we will know that he will be our source of life, our source for living bread, living water that will sustain us. His words will lift us. With him, we will not be in want. This morning, as we close out the second week of Advent, I have to ask you this question. In what ways have you been lacking in worship? In worshiping God? Whether you've been lacking verbally, communally, demonstrably, or even sacrificially, today is a new day. Worship works wonders. Worship is unbelievably transformative for our life. Today is a new day. God wants to transform our soul. This morning, we can worship him with every single one of these ways. If you're struggling with pride, worship him on your knees. If you're facing impossible health situations, lift up your hands to trust that he will be there, present, keeping his promises. No matter what you are facing, you were made to worship. What will you choose to worship today? How will you worship him? Today, if your heart is troubled, will you worship God? Will you worship him with everything? Let's close. Father, we thank you that as we worship you, our lives are made new. That as we see in Mary's life how she worshipped you in this song, this beautiful song that proclaimed your glorious blessings over her life and over future generations and over Israel. Lord, we have the same heart of Mary. Would you prepare us to glorify your name with our words, with everything, in community, with our actions, and with sacrifice. Lord, it does cost us something to worship you, but Lord, it's worth the cost. So Lord, this morning we give you all the praise. We proclaim your name above every other name. And as we leave this place, as we go, would we always worship you? Lord, would you bless us now as we leave? In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand for the benediction? Benediction comes for you this morning from Psalm 66, verses 1 through 2. It says, Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. God bless you. You are dismissed. Go and praise him. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha.